She's just screaming. Sorry for the uh, glare coming off the window here, but uh, we're about to embark on a 2200 mile road trip to uh, help my brother relocate to Texas for a really awesome job opportunity. So it, uh, it's like five o'clock in the morning and uh, haven't even really got ready yet, but just kind of wanted to kick this off and we'll see if, uh, you know, we'll see how this truck does pulling the rented 24, eight by 24 foot cargo trailer. Uh, all the way from uh, northern Colorado down to the middle of Texas. So, of course, uh, everybody knows gas prices have kind of shot up ridiculous here in the last, like, seven days. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. But I figured we'd take you along and uh, we'll document the journey. And I already ran a quarter tank through the truck. I never calculated mileage, but uh, the computer was saying around 10 because uh, I had to run out and pick up that trailer and then drive it back. So... Uh, yeah, I'm going to get some breakfast, get a shower, put some real clothes on, and uh, get in the truck. So we'll see you in a minute, but for me, it'll be a couple hours. All right. Making sure the house is locked up. Let's get it. Just trying to get a little more temperature in the transmission before I go. Ideally, before you or at least in my mind, before you uh, punch it and take off pulling a, pulling a load, you wanna, you wanna get some heat in her. But uh, yeah, 50 degrees ought to be good enough. We, uh, we ought to get rocking and rolling here. We got about a seven hour drive today, if we're lucky. Round recalculation. For whatever reason, the uh, GPS was fighting me here. It kept wanting me to go down a road that didn't make any sense because it doesn't take you to the interstate, so. <laughs> Onboard nav in the truck has been updated too, so I don't know what's up with that. But uh, that's it, it's official. We're on the road, headed towards the interstate. The truck says arrival, two o'clock. I'm gonna say that's being pretty gracious. I'm gonna go with more like 3.30, because I'm gonna be stopping for gas at least twice. And, uh, I highly doubt that I'll be going, uh, what's, which way looks better? Hey, there we go. I highly doubt that I'll be going 75 with this big trailer. So we'll see. We'll see if the truck likes it. I don't know. We don't need to be blowing transmissions just to try and save 30 minutes worth of driving. So off we go. Next stop is hopefully Pueblo for gas if the uh, uh, eyeballs aren't floating by then. Good old Denver. Speed limit's only 55 through here. I'm going 66. I'm getting past like I'm standing still. Cracks me up. Coming up on a uh, refill here, Colorado City. I know you can't tell because there's nothing to look at, but we got about a 15 to 20 mile an hour side wind because uh, we're locked into sixth gear and uh, pull on single digits. There's always power lines in the way of the epic mountain shots while you're driving.
not gonna get a clean run. There's too much traffic coming. Eh, crap. Well, I tried. I don't want to waste all the gas to go flying around these guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's uh, she's just screaming. This last little stretch of Raton Pass is steep. We'll just leave the flashers on. slowing down so I'm not wrapping such high RPMs I I was able to do 75 there for a while and then 70 and now 65 and transmissions hunting around pretty hard but uh, getting a little tired only got about six hours of sleep last night but we're on the final leg of driving day one I'm gonna go put some goat juice in the truck because well gas prices have been going up daily and we will resume the video in a couple of days for you it'll be like two seconds but for me it'll be about 48 hours so we will see you then leg two of this journey is about to begin it is five o'clock in the morning and as you can tell it's a uh, <clears throat> pitch black out here but we've got oh it's windy Ooh. i don't know how much of this the camera's picking up but truck and trailer fully loaded we got 670-ish miles to drive today to uh, kind of central-ish Texas. So, yeah, I'm going to run inside and grab the rest of my stuff and uh, embrace it here. Whew! It's been a whirlwind. We are on the road. Approximately 12 hours to go. Oops. It's a little bit breezy out, so the trailer's kind of whipping around. <laughs> but uh, we're doing just fine at 70 miles an hour. I'm really hoping we can keep this pace because the difference between 65 and 70 over almost 700 miles is 45 minutes of driving. And uh, the difference between 60 and 70 well, it's almost an hour and a half, so just for the sake of mental fatigue, man, I'm hoping we can make her in 12 hours. that gas fill up but the wind was screaming 25 something mile an hour so we are coming through Texaco 
on the New Mexico Texas uh -oh, border. We're getting stuck by the train. Oh man. Well, that kind of figures. We're gonna get stopped by the train. <laughs> this is the Texas border, isn't it? Yep. of the drive and so far from my house to the middle of Texas 1187 miles 8.6 and that's actually verified at the pump too uh, running math manually so yeah that was uh, that was a tug but uh, we're gonna about to pull up to to the house and start unloading Well, it is uh, Friday the 18th, at least I think it's the 18th, but it is Friday, and uh, we're northbound back to New Mexico uh, so we can help load the other trailer uh, for a return trip back down to Texas. And uh, we've been bucking a 20 mile an hour headwind. We actually delayed our drive back by 24 hours because there was high wind warnings all day yesterday with you know, sustained winds 40 to 50 miles an hour. And the truck is doing horridly. And the trailer is empty. And the truck is doing horridly. Uh, and those numbers have been verifying at the pump. I've been doing six and uh, five and a half to five. So, yeah, probably post. I'm not. It's horrible. Well, the final leg of this eight day journey is about to come to a close. I really like this house. Oops, I left the light on. It's a bummer. It's the last time I'm going to be in this house because I really like this house. Oh, that one's on a motion sensor. I forgot about that. Well, this has been the craziest amount of gasoline I have ever ran through a vehicle. That trailer is empty. There we go. Got to come back and get the tractor, but that won't be me. So, the truck yesterday in the wind had gobs and gobs and gobs of power, but let me get the music turned down here. Yep, there we go. And uh, our last, our, we finally got out of the wind and our last bit of fuel economy showed 8.2. But uh, 
has been an insane, I, I had verified at the pump 5.9 mile to the gallon fill up. That's, that's ridiculous. But the temps were fine the whole time. So we're gonna start making our way back to Northern Colorado. It's uh, 5.03 in the morning. I'm gonna let the temps come up just a hair more before I really get on it here. And uh, if all goes as planned, I should be home by 12.30 to one o'clock. So we shall see. All right, well, it is now Sunday, the 20th of March, and I'm back home. I didn't record much on the drive back to Loveland. Um, I was just beat. We, well, for whatever reason, when I do big trips like this, um, I'm just looking at my computer screen, I'm gonna show you here in a minute. But when I do big trips like this, I tend to not sleep very well. And uh, I, it, I think it's just because I'm in an area that I'm not familiar with. There's different noises, things like that. I've always been like that. I'm a light sleeper anyway, but um, I didn't record anything on the way back to, to my house in Loveland uh, except what the dash cam caught. So as I was going through Colorado Springs, um, there was a, a section right on the south side of town before it goes to three lane where uh, a truck and a Jeep were racing up the on-ramp. The truck actually ran the metering light, but uh, you can't really you can't really see it in the video. The light was actually red. Um, I mean, you might, let me zoom this in a little bit. I don't even know if this is gonna focus on this, but probably not. But that, that metering light was red and that truck just blew right through it. And I think, I think that the Jeep tried to punch it and uh, beat him up the off-ramp. And of course, the truck has way more power than the Jeep. And uh, well, I was blasting music in the background, so I couldn't really, uh, I couldn't really include much of that, uh, the, the entirety of the dash cam clip because I'd probably get a, a copyright strike. But I'll start it right here where you hear me honking the horn because uh, he didn't even look. And uh, you know, number one, you'll see in the video, running expired temp tags. Uh, I thought about calling the state patrol on the guy, but all he did was smack his mirror into my mirror because I couldn't move I couldn't move left because there was a car alongside that black trailer and I didn't want to just slam on the brakes because I couldn't tell how close the traffic was behind me and cause a secondary accident. So yeah, let me roll this clip and you'll see what I'm talking about. Yeah, so this was really one of those like Grin and Barrett situations. I've had these before. I've had people smack my mirrors before. Um, I never pulled over because we didn't actually touch, you know, body to body. Um, he didn't hit the trailer or anything like that. But, uh, you know, this is an expired temp tag, February 8th, 3801385. And it was kind of a bluish uh, body color with a matching hardtop four door JK. Pretty identifiable Jeep. Um, you know, this acceleration lane goes way the hell up here. There's no reason to do that. You know, this is this is lack of situational awareness. Um, and, and the only reason why I'm including this in here is because it pissed me off. And I think I have enough, you know, people following on YouTube now. I'm closing in on 25,000 that uh, I wanted to include this in the video because this is the kind of bull crap that's just irritating. Now, after our mirrors touched, um, I maintained my speed at about 68 to 70. This guy wouldn't get anywhere near me. Um, he was probably doing 50, 55 miles an hour and stayed way, 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 way back on the road. So um, a couple of things that could uh, be a cause of that. Number one, the vehicle's not registered. Uh, he might not even have a driver's license, might not even have insurance. So, um, I don't know, you know, I thought about it after I got about eight hours of sleep last night, and uh, I probably should have forced him to pull over and forced the issue, but I was just so damn tired. I wanted to go home. So, 
you know, whether that was right or wrong, I don't know. But uh, let me pull up. Um, let me pull up the good stuff here. So I've calculated out. Um, trying to get this to blow up so we can all see it. I calculated out the mileage for the trip here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna include this as actually a screenshot in the uh, in the video here while I'm talking, but. Uh, I gassed up 18 times, or excuse me, I gassed up 17 times on this trip, and the fuel economy uh, going down was actually pretty good because I think it was a tailwind. Um, you know, it's it's well, it was the last days of winter, but it was meteorological spring in Colorado, March 1st. You know, they call that meteorological spring. Um, so the the four fill ups on the way down. Um, actually, yeah, it was a four fill-ups on the way down, you know, 9.3, 9.2, uh, 8.3, and then when I got into that headwind going up the hills there on I-25 towards Santa Fe, you know, 7.3, and then all the way down to Texas, we had a tailwind that was just pushing us the entire way down, and, you know, that was line six, seven, eight, and nine, um, you know, 8.3, 8.5, 8.4, and then 7.8 as we got into hill country, which that does make sense. It would go down. But, you know, that, I wish I could have ran across a scale uh, on this trip. We didn't, we didn't have time to even try and find one. Um, all the gas stations we pulled into didn't have them either. But uh, we had a tailwind pushing us the entire way down to Texas. Uh, it, it was nuts. Um, and then, of course, on the way home, we had empty an insane headwind i mean 5.9 miles to the gallon verifying at the pump is like uh 13 gallons an hour 12 to 13 gallons an hour and it's like 90 cents a mile to drive the truck at that rate and it didn't matter if we were going 65 or 70 uh, or 60 um the wind was so strong that the truck was still only getting six miles to the gallon so overall trip average uh, was 7.7, .7, eh, we'll round up and call it 7.72, and uh, 1,344 dollars worth of gasoline, and I was just running mid, and uh, cost per mile broke down to 57 cents a mile. So uh, that's very interesting that the overall was 57 cents when there was times that we were doing like 90 cents a mile. So that was pretty nuts, but I hope you liked the video. I wanted to uh, give you some actual stats on a gas burning motor uh, pulling a 24, 8 by 24 foot trailer. I had to have my mirrors folded up because I couldn't see around the trailer without them. Uh, and that's the biggest uh, that's the biggest trailer I've pulled with this truck yet, and the most weight that I've pulled with this truck yet on this many miles, 2,354 miles. That's 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 insane. So. Um, anyway, I hope you liked it. This is a lot different video. This wasn't an off-roading trip. Um, I just I wanted to give some actual power wagon stats, uh, stock gears, 35-inch tires, no lift. This is the, you know as equipped per se, minus my tires. Um, just running mid-grade uh, fuel. So of course mid-grade goes up when you get into Texas. Mid-grade's like 90 and 91 in spots. So. Um, Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we're going to go back to some off-roading here soon. Um, we've got forest roads that should be opening up in the coming months, and I've got a great big old trip coming to uh, um, South Dakota. I can't think straight yet, and uh, that's coming up here in June, so we're definitely taking some footage on that trip because it's going to be fun. I've never off-roaded in the Black Hills. So, uh, Anyway, I hope you all have a great, uh, great rest of the weekend, and uh, happy spring. We'll see you next time.